Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. That is all I can say. Sixer Nation, welcome in. I just watched probably the best regular season game of the year and the best Sixers win of the year, maybe outside of that Nuggets game. What a thrilling, epic comeback by the Philadelphia 76ers. They take down the Memphis Grizzlies behind a 17-point comeback. 17-point comeback after what was maybe the worst half I've ever seen in the first half, a disastrous first half from Joel and B. James Harden. The Sixers pull it out 110-105 to in the first game of the second half. I know we were not live for the game. I am feeling terrible right now, but I had to use every little extra ounce of energy to come on here and give you my immediate thoughts because holy smokes, that was an unreal game. Hit the like button if you enjoy these videos. We will hopefully be live again next game. Sixers and Celtics Saturday night should be a good one. Tough stretch coming up. What a way to start it off here for the Sixers. Uh, subscribe to the show. Hit the bell if you enjoy this content and you want to get updated every time we drop a piece of content. Oh my gosh, man. I mean, here are the emotions of what it's like to be a Sixers fan during a game. I tweeted this out. At the end of the first half, I said games like this are the reason that the Sixers fan base is pessimistic. Sixers were getting out hustled. Joel Embiid started the game 0 for 8. James Harden couldn't get anything going. The Grizzlies were trapping and doubling everything, and they were just all over the map. There was nothing the Sixers could do. They looked like they were about to get the, the brakes blown off of them and, you know, beat by 30 points. And then they went on a couple mini runs at the end of the first half, and everything up to that point, had been shut down. And then they come out in the second half, and I tweet this out. It never fails to amaze me how the Sixers can look like a completely different team from one half to the next. And then, here at the end of the game, best Sixers win of the season. They take down the tough, second-seeded Western Conference Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, I, I mean, there was just so many clutch plays. How about James Harden, Joel Embiid tonight, guys? James Harden with 31-7-7. and seven. He is the main reason, in my opinion, that the Sixers even remotely had a chance to get back in this game. Early fourth quarter, he kept attacking. He kept getting the switches, and he was making quick decisions with the basketball. He was getting downhill, and he took Memphis off their game defensively. James Harden was picking apart that defense, and that is how you need to show up against good defenses in big-time games. Joel Embiid, I... I don't even know how to describe this game from Joel Embiid. It was one of the worst games I've ever seen from Joel, but one of the best games I've ever seen from Joel. He had maybe the worst offensive performance ever in this game, especially in that first half. But he ends up with 27 points, 19 rebounds, 6 assists, and 6 blocks. The defensive side from Joel Embiid was probably the number one or number two reason, maybe tied for number one, that the Sixers won this game. Six blocks, first half, Jaron Jackson Jr., uh, all these guys, man, Tillman, you know, uh, uh, I, I forget the other guy's name, the, the third stringer for the Grizzlies. All of those guys were babying Joel Embiid, like they were bodying him down low. Joel, you know, apparently came into this game with a sickness and, you know, it's coincidence. I guess it's going around, but nah, he probably got at the All-Star game or something and they said his foot's still hurting and he just didn't look like himself. It looked like one of those games where he can't get the flow going, and he started off 0 for 8, and he was taking terrible shots. I mean, like, five seconds into the shot clock, he's just heaving it up, you know, trying to step into a three, and it's wide. And, you know, he comes back in the second half. I guess he heard the noise. I, I saw Chuck talking about him at halftime. I saw everybody talking about him, and he must have heard the noise because he came out, he blocked everything in his way. He didn't let anything up, and he was chirping a little bit. He was getting big setting up his teammates, passing out of doubles. Yeah, he still had a couple bad shots, but this was one of the best second halves I've seen from Joel Embiid, maybe ever. And he was a main reason the Sixers got back in this game. They were letting, you know, some second chance points up. They were uh, letting the Memphis Grizzlies penetrate that paint, kind of, you know, control the vibe of the game, right? The Memphis team is known to be tough and gritty and annoying. That's what they were for most of this game. And then Joel Embiid put a stop to it single-handedly 
Here's a block he had because he had a lot of them. But what a play here with a minute 16 to go. This is against John Morant, one of the most elite guards in the league. Joel Embiid absolutely puts it down. Sixers were down one. And we'll, we'll talk about what happened after this. Look at this. Look at this. He was hurt. He was sick. But it doesn't matter. This is the greatness of Joel. This is why he should be in the defensive player of the year convo every year. This is how he can impact the game. Sometimes, yes, I'm, uh, you know, to be honest, it, we don't see it. Sometimes he looks gas. He looks tired. But the skill set, the level of just, you know, kicking it into gear from Joel Embiid, this is it. This was against Ja. He goes right up and gets that out of there. What a play by Joel. He probably had about 10 highlight plays in the fourth quarter alone. That's how special he was. And that is why he is greatness. And that's why he can impact the game. And if he didn't go, I don't even know what he went, like five for 25 or something like that. I think he was like five for seven for 25. I'm like, it was such a weird game from Joel. If he played a little bit better in the first half, Sixers might win this by 10. But it doesn't matter because he kicks it into gear 13 for 17 from the line. He missed three early on. He wasn't feeling well. And somehow it's just, you know, one of those traits that those type of players have. He just puts on a show, man. Wow. And if you can get this and beat and harden in the playoffs, because er, again, early on, this is the type of game that scares Sixer fans. You're playing against a lot of tough wing defenders, a lot of guys who can throw doubles and then get back to their men and switch a lot. And, you know, Harden and Embiid are going to have to face defenses like this in the playoffs, like the Bostons, like the Milwaukee's, if you want to get to the place you're trying to go. And they showed up here in the second half. What a win, man. Just to stay composed. I mean, Maxie was out of it mentally. He came back, had a couple nice buckets. He finished with 16 off the bench. You had Tobias Harris, who hits a big three late in this game. This was the stretch right here. Uh, the Joel Embiid block on John ja Morant. And, you know, where was that? Uh, James Harden hit right before that hit an unreal three pointer. I'm again, Harden was picking apart that defense. I mean, he's just such a smart player. But late in that fourth quarter for him to, you know, get the ball back with essentially no time on a shot clock. And he steps back from the corner, almost falling into the bench and hits an unreal shot. Here's the play I'm talking about. James Harden again. What was there? One twenty eight to go in the game. And the Sixers are down four. This is a must-needed bucket. Obviously, you know, there's a little bit of luck to this, but wow, what a shot at the buzzer to, to stay composed here. Gets it back from Toby after hesitation. Look at that. Stepping back all the way over the defender. What a shot by James Harden. That was miraculous, man. That was insane. Here's a play from Harden and B. This was five minutes in, uh, in the game. But again, look at what happens. What did Daryl Morey say yesterday? He doesn't know why the Sixers get away from the two-man game. Look how effective it is. And this one's interesting because James Harden knows Dylan Brooks is a very good defender, and he knows Memphis can switch, so he's going to hit him with a little stop. Boom. Embiid sets. Harden steps back, doesn't wait. Bang. I mean, it, it, he's just a smart player, and he was feeling himself. And Dylan Brooks, I mean, he was chirping early in this game. And Jaron Jackson, Dylan Brooks, they were butthurt at the end of this game. They were frustrated. Because they're not used to this type of uh, collapse. They're not used to being on the verge of this type of epic collapse. But the Sixers stayed composed. Harden and B kept chirping. And they showed up and they showed out. So there was that play. And then Tobias Harris, which was great to see. Tobias has been you know, out of it recently for like a month and a half. But he hit a couple big shots in this game. And he hits a huge three with 39 seconds to go. I mean, he just steps right into it. It looked like the Sixers were like moving it around. Nobody wanted to take the shot. Toby says, all right, I'll step up and take it. The whole broadcast was just, you know, going on and on about how Toby needs to be a better option at the number three option for his contract. And he hasn't shown up and he's not taking enough shots. Well, he shut them up. He steps up and hits huge shots. Um, you know, George Yang chirping at the end of the game was huge. Uh, you know, you held John Morant three for 16. I mean, I thought this Memphis team was legit. I mean, I have them as one of the top Western Conference teams, but man, did they fold like a broken tent tonight. Jared Jackson Jr. was great, but again, Embiid matched that intensity in the second half, and uh, Dylan Brooks was getting cooked by James Harden late in this game. Desmond Bain started off with like 17 or 19 in the first, and he cooled right off, but wow, what a game uh, from this Sixers team. That was one of the most thrilling comebacks that I've seen. 
Uh, I thought the Sixers had nice sets in the fourth quarter. I thought the team stayed composed. I thought P.J. Tucker had a couple nice defensive plays. Uh, You know, you didn't see much of Shake. You didn't see much of Melton. This literally felt like a playoff game to me because you didn't get, you know, extended minutes for the other guys, right? It was like pretty much an eight-man rotation, and the Sixers were going up against a gritty defense. It felt like in that third, fourth quarter, everybody was on their feet. Every possession was maximized. And you want to talk about a hell of a game to start off the second half of the season and, and a tough stretch that's going to really define this Sixers team. That's how you do it. That's a big win against a really good team. And it just goes to show at the end of the day, it's hard to put a label on this Sixers team. I Again, like I started off, I have never seen a team that can literally start out a game so putrid, so miserable, and then kick it into gear and look like one of the best teams in the league. So I just wanted to give my quick thoughts again. Uh, wish we could have been there live, but hopefully we'll be back Saturday. Wow, what a performance by Joel B. James Harden. If they can get this type of magnitude from those two consistently together clicking and they can kick it kick it into gear and play a full four quarters like that in crunch time in the playoffs I mean this Sixers team can compete but you don't know what version you're going to get I think that's the kind of gray space that's the the you know worried area for Sixers fans but hey what a win and what a way to start it off we'll see how the next one goes big one on Saturday night Sixers need to avenge that prior loss to Boston but That being said, give me all your thoughts down below here in the comments section. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and like always, I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.